Welcome back guys, hope you guys are having a great day. Today's lesson is going to be on AVL trees. So if you don't know what AVL trees are, they're kind of like binary trees, but with a bigger advantage. So I'll be talking about that in this video. What you're going to need to know are binary trees and big O notation. Even if you don't understand big O notation, we can talk about it in complexity and I'm sure you'll get it. So what I'm planning on covering today is the actual data structure itself, how you do rotations, insertions, and deletions. So let's talk about a binary tree really quick. Binary trees are great because you can traverse through the nodes in log n in an average case scenario. But let's talk about worst case scenario. So let's say we have to insert these numbers in order. So it's going to be like 1, and then we have 2, and then we have 3 on the right, and 4, 5, 6. So you can see that's kind of a linked list now because if you want to go to 6, you have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we know it's going to be at most six steps if we include that first node. And this isn't log n anymore because if it was log n, we should be able to traverse this in at most three steps. So that's the bad thing about binary trees. Even though on average it's O of log of n, worst case scenario, it can be log n, which is ugly. This is what would happen in an AVL tree if we insert those numbers in the exact same order. So you can see that we have three levels, right? So we're going to have at most three steps, including that first node. And you're going to see these numbers next to these nodes that represent the height of the tree at that node. So for example, at six, the tree is one. At five, you're going to see that you only have one child. So your height is two now. And then same thing with four, it's going to be three. And likewise on this side. So you see that you have at most three steps. And with that height variable, we can rotate it as we need. So AVL trees use a little bit more memory because they store the height, but it's a lot more efficient time-wise. So let's talk about how you would insert into an AVL tree using this rotation. So let's insert one, two, then three. So it starts off just like a binary tree. You have one and then you have two here. Let's quickly draw out the height for each one. So this one's going to have a height of one and this one's going to have a height of two. Now when you insert three, the heights are going to change to one, two, and three. And this isn't optimal anymore because once we insert three, it's not balanced anymore. And the way we find out if it's balanced or not is by creating something called the balance factor. I'm going to call it BF for balance factor, and it's going to be the height of the right subtree minus the height of the left subtree. I'm going to label it blue just so that we're not confused with the red. So let's find the balance factor of node three. It's going to be equal to zero minus zero because the height of the subtrees for the left and right are zero because they're not there. The way we keep it balanced using these balance factors is by making sure that no balance factor is greater than one or less than minus one. So in this case, it's OK. So the only acceptable values we have for BF is going to be minus 1, 0, and 1. If it ever goes to 2, then we have to balance again. So we're going to have to do something about this 1 because it has a balance factor of minus 2. So what you do is you go to the next balance factor, which is 2 here. And you're going to see that there's, they're both the same sign of negative. So in this case, we can do a left rotation. This means that we pivot on 2 and we make 2 the head and we bring this down here as the child of 2. So our new tree looks like this, and you can see that the balance factors for these are all between minus one and one. In fact, they're all zero, so it's perfect. So that was left rotation. Let's talk about right rotation real quick. We have this AVL tree, and we have three and two, and we have the heights of them. So if we have one, we're gonna insert it just like a regular binary tree. We're gonna have one here. We're gonna update those heights. So it's gonna be one, two, three. Now, if you look at the balance factors, you can pause the video if you want, but let me do them real quick. This one is going to be zero. This one is going to be positive one because it's a right child. And this one is going to be two because there's a right tree of height two and the left tree is zero because there's nothing there. Now, like you see, again, they're both the same sign. So what you do is you just do a right rotation. So three would come down now here and two is going to be your new parent. And so this is what you're going to have. Seems pretty simple so far. Let's talk about some complex rotations. So let's talk about the left right rotation. Now, if we wanted to insert two into this new binary tree of one, three, it's going to be same as a binary tree. We're going to traverse down this and we're going to see that two comes here. So as you can see, it's not really a linked list because it doesn't follow this path anymore of this or this. Right now, it follows this path of this weird shape. And you're going to see that the balance factors actually are different for these cases. Now, if we find the balance factor of each of these, it's going to be zero minus zero to zero. In this case, you're going to take one minus zero is equal to one. In this case, you're gonna have zero minus two, and the two is what you get from here. And this is gonna be minus two. So you're gonna see that the top one has a negative balance factor, and this one has a positive balance factor. 
So we can't really rotate these two anymore because they have opposite sides. And if you think about it, you can't really visualize rotating this. Not really. So in order to do that first, what we need to do is make it a straight line by rotating these two. So you're going to see it as three coming down and two coming up. And then you put the line here. And now you have this new binary tree where you have the same sign again. And we've seen this before. It was in the left rotation that we did. So all we're going to do is rotate this one, bring it down here, and we're going to add it here. So our new tree is going to be two, one, three. That's pretty much it. Let's talk about right, left rotation. That's the last one. So now you're going to have one and three, and you're going to want to insert two. So right, left rotation looks a little bit like this. Let's insert two here. I'm not going to be writing the heights anymore for every single one, but let's talk about the balance factor. So the new balance factors are going to be zero, minus one, and then positive two. So we have to balance because there's a two here, and these two are opposite signs again, so we can't really rotate it anymore. So what we do is we swap these two again. So now we're going to have three, two, and then one here. So the balance factors are going to be zero, one, and two, and they're both the same sign. So you can rotate it and you can actually rotate it right. Just like how we did before. So we're going to bring three down here. Like that. So our new graph is going to look like one, two, three. And just like that's balanced. And we use all these cases whenever we insert something. Let's use this example I saw on the Java point website. I'll have the link in the description if you want to check that out too. So let's insert it just like a regular binary tree. So we're going to have 63, nine is going to come to the left. And then we have 19 come here. And if we draw the balance factors already, they're not balanced anymore. So let's do a left right rotation in this case because they have opposite signs. So we switch 19 and nine first, and now we're gonna rotate that. So we swap nine and 19, and now we're gonna rotate it to make 19 the top. So we're gonna rotate and bring 63 down here and bring the root here and then get rid of that. So this is our new tree and you can see it's balanced. Let's now add 27. 27 would come here. So the balance factor would change on the right side now. This is gonna be zero, this one is gonna be one, and this is gonna be minus one. Still in between one and negative one, so we're good. Let's add 18. 18 would come here, and we're gonna update the balances accordingly. So this is gonna be zero, this one is gonna be minus one, and this is gonna be zero now because both left and right subtree have a height of two. Let's add 108 here. It's gonna have a balance factor of zero. This is also gonna be zero now. And now let's add 99. 99 would come over here. Balance factor would be zero, and this would be changed to one. This would be changed to minus one. And so would this. If I'm going too fast, feel free to pause it and then check it out yourself. Finally, let's add 81 here. So 81 is gonna be right here. And let's test the balance factors again. So this is gonna be zero, this is gonna be one, and this is gonna be two. So we can't have two, so we're going to have to rotate it again. And you know it's going to be a right rotation because we have the same signs here. So yeah, let's rotate. So 108 would come down here now. So now these are balanced. And everything else, say, is pretty much the same. So this is going to be minus one. And then this is also going to be minus one still. So that's how you get a balanced AVL tree by inserting these values. Let's talk about inserting these values. Like we saw that this would give us a link list when we try to insert it into a binary tree. And let's talk about how we would do it with an AVL tree. So we start off with one, two. Balance factors are gonna be zero and negative one here. When we add three, this is gonna be zero, this is gonna be negative one, and then this is gonna be negative two. Like that, you have to make a left rotation. So one would come down here, and then two would be the root. So our new thing is gonna be two, one, three. Let's insert four then. Four would come here. And you're gonna get these balance factors so we can keep inserting. So let's add five. And the balance factors are gonna be zero, minus one, and minus two. So we're gonna have to do a right rotation on this pivot. So we bring three down here, connect it to four, and make four the root of the right subchild of two. So this is what we're left with, and let's add six finally. So we had six here. This is gonna have a balance factor of zero. This one is gonna have negative one. It's also going to have negative one, but when you look at this one, it's going to be negative two because this is a height of one and then this has a height of three. So one minus three is minus two. 
And you can see that this and this have the same sign, so it's just going to be a left rotation. But it's a little confusing now because we can't really do that with this value right here. So we can't exactly just rotate 2 down here, 2 and 1, because 3 is right here. So what you do is just forget about that 3 for now. Just take that somewhere else, you bring that 2 down here, just like you did before. And that 3 that we initially had over here, it still has to be left of 4 because it's less than 4, but it's also greater than 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to add 3 here now. And all of a sudden it's balanced again, and that's what we had before. So this is going to take at most 3 steps to traverse through. Let's talk about deletion real quick. It should be very simple. It's just like deleting for a binary tree and then just balancing it again. And balancing is just rotating. So let's do that. So if we delete four, we're gonna take the rightmost value of the left subtree. So it's gonna be three right here. We're gonna add three to the top here. And then the first affected parent node is gonna be two. So let's look at the balance factor of two. So the balance factor of two is already minus two, which we can't have. So we're gonna have to do another rotation based on this one. And since they're the same sign, we can just do a quick right rotation. So two would come down here, one would come here, and then one would be the new root for the left subtree of three. And that's how you delete, it's pretty much the same as everything else. I do have a couple links for this, for the code implementation of this, and the AVL tree visualizer, where you can try it out yourself by inserting and deleting values. It's gonna be in the description below. Thank you guys so much again for watching this. If you do have any suggestions for my next videos, please comment it down below and share it with anyone you think it would be helpful for. Take care everyone.